Hi, this is Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to count atoms and read chemical formulas. So there is a joke often told in chemistry circles, and it goes like the following. Two men walk into a bar. The first guy says, I'll have some H2O. The second guy says, I'll have some H2O too. The second guy dies. I hope you're laughing right now. Uh, there's a huge difference between H2O and H2O2. And they look similar, but one has an extra oxygen, and drinking water is generally very healthy. We need water to live. Drinking concentrated hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2, is not very safe or healthy. Uh, I'm sure if it was concentrated enough and you drank enough, you'd probably die. A chemical formula tells us what elements a substance is made up of and in their proportion. And here we have water, H2O. That is the chemical formula for water, and it tells us what water is made up of. And there is a rule when we're dealing or reading with chemical formulas. We're going to look at two rules. The first rule is that a subscript, that little two right there, the small, smaller two, it applies to what is directly before it. So what comes directly before it? The H, the hydrogen. So water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in water. So don't think that there's two oxygens, there are two hydrogens. Again, the two comes, applies to what is directly uh, before it. Whatever comes right before the two, that's what it applies to. So when we have carbon dioxide, that crazy greenhouse gas um, that our cars are emitting, causing global warming and climate change, uh, the two, the two applies to the oxygen because the oxygen is what is directly before it comes right before the two. So there's one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms in carbon dioxide. Again, the rule is that it applies to what's directly before it. In this case, it applies to everything in the parentheses. The parentheses is what is directly before it. So we have calcium hydroxide here, and we have, what this is saying is we have two units of hydroxide. So there's going to be two hydrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms, only one calcium atom. This two does not apply to the calcium. It only applies to what is directly before it. And that means the entire parentheses. We can visualize this um, by thinking of there being two hydroxides because there be hydroxides because there are two hydroxides. So calcium is attached to two hydroxides. And again, this is two oxygen, two hydrogen one calcium, exactly what we have up here. So the two applies to the entire paragraph, doubling it in effect. If we had sucrose or table sugar, its chemical formula is C12H22O11. And that means there's 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms. Again, these subscripts apply to the element that is directly before them, or if there was a parenthesis, to everything in the parentheses. Now, what if we had two C12H22O11? Uh, we would end up with 24 carbon atoms, 44 hydrogen atoms, and 22 oxygen atoms. Why? Because we're going to see another rule when we have a number at the front of a chemical formula. This, too, essentially applies to everything here. This is an actual depiction of a sugar molecule using a ball and stick model. One molecule of sugar, the smallest unit of sugar that is possible. This would be one molecule of sugar. And there are 12 carbon atoms, these gray atoms. There are 22 hydrogen atoms, these white atoms. And there are 11 oxygen atoms, the red ones. And what that means, this too essentially means is if you take this whole molecule, this is one molecule, one unit of sugar, this too means I have two of them. You would have to draw another one, another molecule of sugar over here. So essentially you're just doubling everything, everything in this formula. So the two applies to everything after it. And the rule is simple. A whole number coefficient at the front of a formula applies to everything after it. So if we had two ammonia molecules, two NH3, there would be two atoms of nitrogen. And there would be six atoms of hydrogen because you have two H3s. Two H3s. And again, a way to visualize this is with brackets. There are two units of nitrogen. That whole number coefficient, the two, applies to everything in front of it. And we can look at this visually by saying, or uh, actually really visually, 2NH3 means there's two ammonia molecules. This would be one ammonia molecule. 
you have one nitrogen atom and there's three hydrogens attached to it. And this would be one NH3. Two NH3 would be two of these units, what we have here. So you again have uh, two blue nitrogen atoms and you're gonna have six total hydrogens. So this is how we read chemical formulas. This is what they mean. And we have two rules. Now we're gonna get a little tricky. We're gonna put those two rules together. And we have calcium phosphate here. And the answer is down there already, but let's see how we do this. Um, we know this two is gonna to apply to everything. Two is applying to everything. So there's three CAs right here. This two is gonna double them to six CAs. Um, this two is applying to this parentheses, but this two also applies to everything in parentheses. This two means I have eight oxygen and two phosphorus, but I have two of them. I have two units of this. So two times two is gonna be four phosphorus and 16 oxygen. And let's do that again step by step just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, if we wanted to break this down visually, 2Ca3PO4, uh, 2, calcium phosphate. This 2 means we have 2 units of this. So I put the units here. This is unit 1, unit 2. So there's 2 units. And we can count atoms this way and add them together. And we can further break down this parentheses. This 2 right here, same 2 over here means you gotta you have two of what's in the parentheses so I kinda broke it down again visually this is what this is saying you have uh, one unit here one unit here so we have three CAs three CAs for six one two three four phosphorus four eight twelve sixteen oxygen so we don't generally do this when we're counting atoms or balancing equations but when you're first learning it visually this is a way to understand what these leading coefficients and what these subscripts actually mean. If I were to do this, I would simply ignore the two. I would just cut it out for a second and then I would count atoms, ignoring this two. I know this two applies to everything in the parentheses, so two O fours is gonna be eight oxygens, eight oxygens. 2 phosphorus is going to be 2 phosphorus. We have phosphorus times 2. This 2 does not apply over here. It only applies to what is directly before it. And this 3 applies to the calcium. So we have 3 Ca. And now I would take into account my 2. I just got to double all of these. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 8 is 16. And again, if this was a 4, if we have 4 Ca3, uh, which we wouldn't, I uh, have, but um, actually we could have that. Never mind. We could have that if we had four or four units of it. Uh, we would multiply these numbers by four instead of by two. So it's kind of easier to ignore the leading number first, count the atoms, then just distribute it to each one. And I believe I show that step by step here. Count atoms: three calcium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, and two times four is eight oxygen atoms. And now we got to use our two. Apply the two by doubling everything. And that's exactly what we just did. So there are two rules. The whole number coefficient applies to everything in front of it. Uh, coefficient at the uh, beginning of a formula applies to everything. Everything after it. you got to double it all at the end. And a subscript applies to what is directly before it. What comes directly before that subscript. And if it's some uh, parenthesis unit, it everything in the parentheses. And hopefully now you can count atoms and read chemical formulas and understand a little bit better what they mean. This is Mr. Sapone. I'm out. And hopefully that joke is funny.